first step to the actual design is understanding the patch layout for our primary surfaces. As I take a look at this, I'll notice that I have big primes, primary surface running through here, up and around. I have another nice slab running through here, another slab running through here. So that means I'm going to have to create some curves to drive some theoreticals through that edge, that edge. Eventually I'm going to have to create uh, some primary slabs for this bump out boss and such, but I need to have a base to blend into initially. So I'm going to focus my energies on generating a few slab surfaces across the top and this lower as well. Now typically this cutout is a offset from the IP interface. So this is something that I typically pay very little attention to until nearing the end as the IP will drive that shape. The reason why the IP drives that shape is when you're getting into the vehicle you see the side of the IP. That side will be offset to achieve the appropriate gap and then blend it back into the door upper surface. So that being said, I need to generate a couple of theoretical curves. First theoretical curve I want to draw is this top edge. So what I'll go ahead and do is go into theoretical construction with a right mouse click, define and work object. What this does is it's going to allow me to draw directly into that geometrical set that I have set up. Now, I like to draw two curves on opposing planes and then do a curve combine. The curve types that I like to use are what's called 3D curves. This is a curve function from the freestyle workbench. Now, by default, the curve is going to fall upon one of the three primary planes, the X plane, Y plane, and the Z plane. It all depends on how you have the compass oriented. So my initial curve that I want to draw in is going to be this top shape. So I want to look at my door upper from the side view. I'll true the view up. I'll just click on the Y axis to the compass. And I will right mouse click on top of the compass. And what I want to do is I want to make my ZX plane my privileged plane. By doing so, when I select my 3D curve, and I specify control points, let me pull this out of the way, now I can begin drawing directly on that plane. I'm a big fan of keeping my curves as simple as humanly possible, especially my initial planar curves. So in this case, I'm just going to simply select three points. It's going to give me control points. And I'm going to move this curve into position. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to try to get too accurate. I'm just going to get something in quick and rough. And the reason why I select away from the part is, is because if I select it on top of the actual mesh or on top of anything, it'll want to snap and constrain the point that I am selecting to the element. So by picking in space away from everything, I affirm that the curve is not being constrained to anything. So I draw in my first curve. Again, just quick and easy. Now that I have my first curve in, I'll click on my Z axis and I'm going to look down upon the model. Now I'm going to right mouse click, X, Y plane. And once again, uh, using a 3D curve, I will pick three points near the area that I want. And I will move this curve. to the position that I need it in. And again, I'm just going for something quick. And I'm going to fine tune it a little bit later on. So I'll just get it relatively close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now that I have that curve drawn in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my theoretical curves. I'm going to right mouse click, define and work object. And now I'm going to go in and use what's called combine. Because I have two planar curves, I've only picked three points for my control points. I know that the curves are planar. 
Uh, I can leave this combined type at normal and simply select the two curves. Now, as you can see, because of the font that I created or used earlier for my geometrical set, the combine automatically assumes those properties. So now I can really see that curve. Now, as I zoom in and out, I can get a pretty good idea of what the actual model looks like. And I can see here, all right, I got my curve, it comes in. And what I want to do is I want to hit this peak down here. So that means I'm going to true my view up again. And we can see there's my initial curve. Let me click on the axis system again. And I'm going to go to my initial curve. And I want to modify that. Now you'll notice that if I go to try to modify it, the arrows only point in two directions. The reason is, is because I did not readjust the compass. So I'm going to right mouse click on the compass go to my ZX plane and now this gives me full ability to modify this. Okay, If I want to I can foreshorten it a bit and rotate it um, to get the highlight where I need it. And zoom out a little bit and here I can start pulling this to achieve the theoretical that I want. And that's what I mean by earlier, just sort of roughen in, just get it kind of close doesn't have to be perfect. And once you get the combine in, you can go on and um, start fixing things up and making it pretty. Oops, wrong direction. There we go. And let's see here. Let's take this guy. And select OK. Now I will take a look at this. Let me go back to my XY plane. Take a look at this from the top view. Oops. And we can see that a bit off as I get to the rear of the door. So I'll double click on my curve. my first curve. Now that I have that initial theoretical, I need to drive the next set of curves. I'm going to get this curve down here so I can put in my initial slab surface. Now, a lot of times there's, uh, shall we say, a specific shape that the stylist wants. And that shape needs to be properly scaled along the entire, let's say in this case, the door. Well, the initial shape that I have drawn with this first curve, I have. Now, because of that, I'm going to use this curve to draw in my next curve. Now, if I take a look, the gun sighted down the x-axis. More. If I take a look, we can see that this curve here is going to sit further in. What I'm going to do now is, again, I'm going to use the initial base curve and just simply do a parallel. Now, you'll notice that because I did not change my geometrical set, it's going to go into my theoretical curves. I want that in my construction. So this is going to be one of the drivers. So I'll go back to parallel. It's going to be this curve down here. And once again, I'm just going to offset that out. We'll just say 7.5. The next curve that I need to draw, I'm going to true up my view in the y direction. I'm going to right mouse click, ZX plane, 3D curve. Once again, 
I'm just going to select three points out in space, away from everything, and just draw my curve in to where I need it. Select OK. Go back to theoretical curves, define a work object. I'm going to do another combine between the parallel and the curve that I just drew in. Select OK. And now when I take a look, you can see that I need to clean this curve up a little bit more. I need to bring this up. So I'll double click on this. Drag this up a bit. now take a gander. Now the next thing I need to do is, as you can see, is that this thing is pulled pretty far away from my part. And that's telling me that this parallel curve needs to move. So if I come in here and I start modifying this curve, get it pretty darn close to where I need. So it looks pretty good there. Okay, I can see I need to modify my 3D curve. At this end, maybe get a little bit closer. Pull it up a bit. And again, I'm just going in for very rough. Let me get this out of the way a rough estimation. And now I'll go back and clean this up. So those are my two initial theoretical curves. And we'll leave it at that.